Hello guys and welcome to this week's episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. I'm Paula, your host, and today I'm going to be chatting about reflection. It is the season and all. As the founder of the Landscapers Circle and the Limitless Landscapers podcast, I am here to help you get more money, time and freedom to make your life and business truly limitless. Through my experiences as the owner of a garden design and landscaping business and through tried and tested methods, if you want help with the marketing, managing and growing of your business, then you are in the right place. If you are a landscaper, garden designer, horticultural business or a supplier to the industry, be sure to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back to the show. This episode is all about reflection. Not only it is tis it the season to be jolly and reflective and think of all the good stuff, there's been something that's been happening, i.e. I turned the big four up. And judging by the party I had, life truly does begin at 40. So I'm, I'm embracing this year and making sure it's going to be a big one which means I need to get ahead so this is kind of what I'm urging you guys to do is instead of thinking about all these things in January like new year's resolutions and you know planning for January I think we all need to start thinking about this stuff in December and because obviously I get another year older every year this time every year I tend to take this as as the time to begin reflecting back because for me it's another year gone And I also start to think of what success looks like for me, what I want it to look like for me in different areas of myself and my business. And I tend to take on challenges. So I've literally just signed up to a brand new coach and I'm going to become a bodybuilder, which is quite exciting. I'm quite excited to try and see if I can do this and choose the right coach for me. So that's been a major change this last week or so where I've had to start a new meal plan and start a new program of training and I'm literally going into something called off season I've never been an off season before ready to go into later next year so it's very very exciting because sometimes we can all think we'll start in January oh we'll give up drinking January we'll give up X, Y, and Z in January. We'll do this in January. We'll start work on this in our businesses in January. I will go on that diet in in January. I don't believe in diets anyway, but we'll start this lifestyle change in January. And actually, I've randomly made the decision to do it now. So I'm going on holiday in 12 days as I'm recording this podcast. And essentially, I've decided to embark on a brand new eating plan and a new training plan, which seems insane because I'm paying quite a lot of money for it I'm paying a lot of money for the expertise and I'm also then knowing that I'm going to be a week on holiday and it's also the Christmas period so the easy thing would have been for me to say I'll start in January and we'll go full steam ahead but actually I don't like being without a program I don't like being without a plan and that goes in all areas of my life so particularly when it comes to eating and training I like to be have a prescriptive plan in place that will help me get to the goals that I want to achieve. In this case, it's bodybuilding, which is exciting. But essentially, I need to start now. Otherwise, it will get to January and I'll be so out of sync and out of a routine that it'll be twice as hard to get back in one. So that's really important for me. And actually, when I was doing this, I started then reflecting back on some of the big stuff that's happened for me and all areas of the business we you know a really big thing we did was held a massive party for my 40th which was this weekend just gone and it was insanely epic is the word I thoroughly enjoyed it it was probably the best party I've ever had in my entire life and essentially it's something I've never done before and I was really concerned you know would we get it looking right you know we went down a 90s rave neon thing I was like will it look good enough or will it look really tacky you know you can worry about how much money you're spending are people going to turn up stuff like that so it was a bit of a step outside of our comfort zone and nailed it and had a great time but also looking back on our house this time last year was not how it is now we've we've done some work on it is both businesses are in very different places than they were last year and in particular I got my Spotify wrapped I don't know if you guys have looked at your Spotify wrapped I love it this time every year is great because again it's it's 
It's really encouraging reflection. And I got my Spotify wrapped through for my personal Spotify. So I could see all the, the you know, the, the artists I loved last year or this year coming up and what songs I constantly played. And being a mum, there's some obvious songs in there that aren't my favourite, but the kids have obviously played on a loop. And I love it. I, I don't know about you guys. I really like looking back at, oh my God, I was listening to that tune. And then you listen to that and then you think, really? Like, what the hell? What was I doing then? Well, oh yeah, I remember I was doing this. The business was doing this. I was in a really good place, et cetera, et cetera. So I really loved that. And what I didn't know was as a podcaster, that I had a podcast as wrapped until my very, very good friend and partner in crime, Charlotte, told me to look at my podcast Spotify wrapped. And it was really, really cool because we can reflect back and think, oh, we haven't done much until you truly begin looking back and reflecting. And what podcast wrap did for me is did the hard bit for me. It started looking back at the facts of what was happening in the podcast and I'll share with you a few things. I'll be sharing a few stories and posts over the next coming weeks on this, but it actually blew my mind because as a podcaster, I've actually created over the last year, 814 minutes of podcasts for you guys to listen to. And it's in five countries, top five countries. It's the number one podcast for 33 fans. Who the hell are them? Who who of you guys are listening to me and I'm your number one podcast? I'd love to know if you got your podcast, uh, if you got your Spotify wrapped and your top podcast is me, shoot me a message on Insta because I'd love to know who those 33 fans are where I'm your number one podcast. That's insane. I love that. But what was really interesting is I'm in the top 15% of the most followed podcast in the category I'm in, which it's really freaking cool because sometimes I create this podcast and I love doing it. But back a couple of months ago, when I wasn't sure what what direction I was going to take TLC in, and I was having a bit of a waiver on this, I, I wondered if I should just go all in on my landscaping design company. And then I, I thought to myself, but I keep getting told the podcast is amazing. And I'm thinking to myself, but is it? I don't know. And then this Spotify wrapped came out and I was like, Jesus Christ we are doing really well as a podcast or should I say I am I'm the only one here and 95% of my listeners came in 2022 which was when I stepped out on my own when Charlotte left the business and I stepped out on my own so I must be doing something right so yeah it was it was insane to find out some you know fantastic oh, stats on the podcast and really reflect back on what's going really well I mean another fact which I didn't really know was I'm in the 10% most shared globally pretty cool considering it's just me sat in my house recording my thoughts for you fellow landscapers and garden designers out there and horticultural businesses that need a bit of support and obviously my aim with the podcast is if you love the podcast I hope you will come over and join the TLC tribe because that is my ultimate plan I want you to enjoy the podcast but I'd also love to support you more via the offerings that I have in TLC so that has been really really cool to re reflect back and in your business you know what are you doing that's bringing in your clients or really engaging your clients and think about you know are you have you have you started attracting new clients that are maybe bigger and better projects has your avatar changed this year have you up leveled your business in some way have you added a service to your business something that i would reflect back on and you know i mentioned it in last week's episode surviving and thriving is looking back on figure facts and figures as well for your marketing like where where are people come from um and what's going on there as well but essentially you know reflecting back on what you've achieved is insanely worthwhile to do because i think what happens is we all get caught up in the day-to-day and we can all go through periods of dips and highs, highs and lows all the time in business. There's never been, there's never been a minute I feel in my life where it's just been a steady, <laughs> a steady constant in, in business side of things that everything's just constant on a level. There's always a, a escalating high and a, a really bad low, but it's about how we get over them. So when it comes to reflecting, I often like to think back to reflect the brilliant things to celebrate i.e the podcast stats that i got through where it just proves to me that doing the podcast is on my top priority list it also shows to me that 
I am attracting the people that I want to attract into my life for TLC. So I'm getting to speak to more and more of you, whether that's me speaking to you on the podcast and then you come in to speak to me in TLC or vice versa. But many, many of you are loving the podcast, which is fantastic. Um, or the other thing to reflect back on is what lessons have you learned? What lessons are you being taught at the moment that you need to make changes on? Because I find that this time of year, I'm, in, I'm always in a position with my landscaping and design business where I'm thinking, oh my goodness, we've got to close down for two weeks, which means we have to continue to pay the overheads, which stack up in a business like ours. And I expect it's the same for you guys and pay ourselves and make sure that we get back to work as soon as we can in January to start earning money again. Because unfortunately in the landscaping business side of things, if you're not working, you're not earning. So managing this Christmas period is often a difficult thing. It's not just for me. I've spoke to many landscapers who feel the same way. And I want to say to you guys, if you are think, feeling like it's a bit of a pinch point at the moment, you're trying to think what, you know, I'm, I'm really stressing to get jobs finished. That, that's often the, the main thing. I need to get jobs finished so I get money in. I need to get jobs finished so I get money in. But I also need a break because we all know we're all working really, really hard. It's god awful weather half the time as well. So you're up against the weather. You're up against the fact that it's going to be Christmas. And it's a real big downtime. And I want you to reflect here and think what lessons are you, is the universe trying to teach you right now that happens every year? Because it has been known that unless you learn the lesson and ch make changes, that you'll continue to learn that lesson until you make the change. So what lessons do you feel like that you're being constantly taught by the universe? I know for me, it's managing this time of year. So let's get for me it's let's get a plan into place that next year it's not like and you know during COVID it wasn't like this because it, it was a very different period it, you know it was very very different back then but now it's kind of back to pre-COVID I suppose and people leads are going more quiet you know you're, you're not getting as many leads in and People are thinking about Christmas and you are now spending it with your family and friends thank God by the way but it puts a whole different perspective on things because we need to close down. We need to, you know, make sure everything's in place. So we're going to travel and see our family or like me going on holiday to avoid everybody just for my own little family, by the way. And essentially it's important to think of what lessons. So reflect, reflecting back on the celebrations of life. So what can you celebrate? I can celebrate the fantastic success of the podcast I can celebrate the fact that now I'm down to my key core, my key core people in my business that I want to keep in my business. Now I can grow it and grow it better than I did the last 20 times I've grown this business up and back in my landscaping business. I can celebrate the fact that I've got a fantastic VA in the Philippines that that create, you know, edits these podcasts, that creates my graphics, that that gets the work done I need her to do so I can crack on with the rest of it. I can celebrate my clients who are one-to-one -one clients with me in TLC, who I get to speak to every month and help to help them develop their business, help them question what they're doing in their businesses now and plan for 2023 to make it an even better year than 2022. And I can celebrate the fact that my landscaping business is still going strong, going into our 13th year. And I can really celebrate the fact that we won a national award this year. That is like been a dream of mine for 12 years. We've won 32 awards now on my last count. We've got another two that are shortlisted as finalists for the APL awards. So we'll find out if we've won anything then. And of course, we've got the Marshalls Awards next year, which I'm, I'm preparing entries as we speak. So it's a really exciting time for Aura Landscapes. And there's also new things on the horizon that I'm looking to start early next year so there's a lot to celebrate there's a lot to celebrate all the time but we sometimes just go about life not thinking not reflecting something that I've started doing as of my birthday a friend of mine got me a mindfulness journal and it literally takes about a minute to fill in and essentially you do it at the beginning of the day and you set your intentions and you log how you're feeling what your intentions are for the day and then in the evening you log how, how you were mindful during, were you able to be mindful at any point? Were you able to be quiet and reflective at any point? How did you feel at the end of the day? 
and what are you grateful for essentially so you're always reflecting back on the day you're reflecting back on your moods and you're setting intentions and I think that's a really good practice to do just to help make us think and reflect daily so we're not just coming to the end of the year which we always do December January New Year's resolutions I freaking hate New Year's resolutions it's a passion of mine. I, I just New Year's resolution like particularly when it comes to health and fitness I have been in into health and fitness for many years I did a degree in it for Christ's sake so I love health and fitness so it's always been a lifestyle for me yes I understand some people it's not a lifestyle, but to make it a New Year's resolution means it's going to last five minutes. Same as I'm going to lose two stone, for instance. So they go on a crash diet and then start eating normally and you pack back on the pounds. It's not viable or sustainable to do it that way. You need to create lifestyle. You need to create a lifestyle in that perspective. And I think it's the same for our business. We go into, you know, New Year. We've got loads of resolutions we're going to do, personal business, whatever. And then we don't think about it again. And then we go come to the end of the year and we're sort of like, oh, we didn't do that. Oh, I'll wait till January to start that now. And so it's a perpetual, constant rigmarole of doing the same old thing and expecting different results. It's not, it's not rocket science. That's why I'm urging you in this podcast episode to reflect, reflect on the wins. What, what has been the best thing this year that you've done in your personal life? And in your business, what big thing have you achieved? What small things have you achieved? What have you enjoyed doing the most? What could you do more of next year to make 2023 more enjoyable for you? Forget about the money for for a minute. What could be more enjoyable for you? Would you want more time to do your hobbies? Or would you want to be home at three to pick up the kids, for instance? I don't know, whatever it could be for you. How, How can you make next year more enjoyable? rather than how can you make next year, you know, a way to drive yourself into the ground again. So what I tend to see is people work, 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 work to try and achieve something. They they don't achieve it and then think they have to work twice as hard to get there next time. Um, I would suggest, no, it's, it's a switch in your mindset, but that's a whole different episode and a whole different conversation. Mindset is everything. Energy is everything. But essentially... I think reflecting back is your first step. So reflecting now to set some goals for next year, because let's be honest, it's really fun setting goals and it's really fun to think whether you're going to achieve them next year, but we need to keep reflecting. We need to keep reflecting back and seeing how we can tweak our actions in order for us to continue to achieve our goals. See, some of us set goals in our mind, on paper, whatever, and then we don't look at them again till the end of the year. Whereas really we need to keep our goals front and center of mind so we can set our intention each day to try and try and achieve. You're not going to achieve that big goal in a day, but if it's always front and center of mind, you are going to act in such a way to make those focused actions that do impact on achieving that goal. So by the time you get to the end of the year, obviously you've achieved that goal and gone further, but it's all about taking focused action and I think the problem is at this time of year and most of the summer you can get dragged into the space of being headless chicken running around thinking you've got to do everything you've got to make everything perfect for Christmas you've got the whole added pressure of Christmas on top of everything and you can feel like you're not getting anywhere so it would be nice if you could carve 10 minutes in your day or your weekend or whenever you want to do this and just think about everything you've achieved and write it down. Write down everything you've achieved in this year so far. And maybe if you did set your goals last year, have a look back to see if you've achieved any of them. That's always a fun fun task to do because sometimes we've achieved some goals that we forgot we'd even set in the first place. Um, and then, yeah, and then look to 2023 and think, what could I achieve next year? And what's going to make me feel happier next year? What could I do in my business that will make it easier for me to bring abundance into my life next year? What did I do this year that I really enjoyed and really loved and want to do more of next year? There's lots of questions. It's a very reflective time of the year. Well, it is for me. And yeah, I think you'd be surprised just how much you have achieved so far. And I think you will be surprised on how many lessons you've probably learned along the way as well. Because yeah, 
write those down as well. What lessons did you learn and how did you change? And how are you going to make sure you don't make the same mistakes again? Because making mistakes is not being a failure, it's learning. And essentially learning and implementing change means you'll achieve better next time. So embrace, embrace the mistakes and the failures, embrace everything because you've only just got to learn from them and take a bit of self-responsibility for it. There's not a blame in culture around here. I don't go much on blame. I, t I take full responsibility for my, the parts I play in things. And, you know, I aim not to blame everybody because sometimes if you just think about being in that person's shoes, it's probably something else that's impacting on that. And we've all got to take a lot of, you know, we have to accept, be self-accepting in the fact as business owners and leaders, we are leading the way. So it's probably something we've done that's triggered someone else to do something wrong. So we've got to take a portion of that on ourselves, which I highly embrace. And I don't, I don't beat myself up for things. I don't beat myself up for the mistakes I've made. I learn from them, implement change and move on. So yes, reflect, reflect and enjoy it. Get a, just get a piece of paper and just write down everything you've achieved, every lesson you've learned, and then get another sheet of paper, what you want next year to look like what you want it to feel like, what you want to do more of, less of. Yeah, and just just have a bit of fun with it. Have a bit of fun. It's not, you know, it's not meant to be something that makes you feel awful. It's meant to be something to do for fun that will ultimately get you in a better space to make desired action happen quicker. And we've also got, what are we now, the 7th of December, We've also got another just short of 20 days to get things done. So don't stress. It's all going to be good. It is the season and all. So that's all I want to bring with you today. I will be back next week with some more podcast episode for you. In the meantime, I do have, obviously, if you do want some support, the Landscape Circle is here for you. Go check out the business roadmap on thelandscapecircle.co.uk because there's lots of offerings for wherever you are in your business at this moment. If you are looking to start or, you know, maybe you've just started, but you want help launching your garden design or landscaping business, we do have the course from the ground up. Now, our first lot of cohort, our first cohort has gone exceptionally well. They're well into month three, loving it, getting really involved in avatars and marketing strategy at the moment, which is, is my, my thing, my bag. And they're really loving it. We're looking to take on the next cohort. So cohort two of students that want to launch or start their garden design or landscaping business. And that's going to be towards the end of January 2023. So if that's you, go to thelandscapercircle.co.uk forward slash launch or forward slash from the ground up. If you go to the business roadmap and click launch, you can go there and put your name down on the wait list. There's going to be a couple of bonus contents for you. For any waitlisters that join the next round of the course, you'll get some bonus content uploaded for you, which will be fantastic. So Get yourself on the wait list and then I will be in touch with you on how you can secure that space. So that's really exciting. I'm really excited to work with another group of students and help them start their businesses. That's that's what I love. That's what I love doing in TLC. And also, if you are a business that's existing and you're wanting to up level and accelerate to the next level, we do have a couple of membership options for you, whether, where, whether you want to access the topics, templates and masterclasses or whether you want help from me one-to-one -one and in a mastermind setting then go check out that roadmap and fill in your details because um yeah that's the best way you're going to get support next year to make sure 2023 goes off with a bigger bang than 2022 so as i say go away do the task have some fun get reflecting mistakes celebrations lessons everything and then what do you want from 2023? And share with me if I'd love it. If you emailed me info at thelandscapercircle.co.uk, that would be fantastic. I love to hear stuff. Maybe I've got something I could help to support you. Just email me and I can send you some stuff on if it's applicable for you. Also, we do have the masterclass still available at Discover. It's the first time I've done a masterclass with no audience. So it's a different kind of experience for me. Um, it's still fantastic. So if you want to 
indulge yourself in a free masterclass, your five-step plan to building a successful landscaping and garden design business, go to the landscapecircle.co.uk forward slash discover and get your name on the list. And once you pop your name in, you'll be sent the, um, the masterclass to your email for you to listen to at whatever time you've got. I mean, I know we're all starting to wind down, so maybe it's the time to get your name on the list and get a copy sent to your inbox. Ah, and breathe. And that's me for today. Thank you guys for listening and massive thanks to my listeners, regular listeners as well on this podcast, because we are just continuing to grow. So please do rate this podcast on Apple or Spotify and please do share because the way we've got into five countries is insane. And this is how I get this podcast to continue to grow going into 2023 and beyond. So I have to thank you because it was a consideration that I was going to get rid of the podcast at one point. And actually, absolutely not. Am I going to do that now? Because I know you guys are totally benefiting from it. And I've got a lovely listener base that obviously enjoys listening or watching the podcast over on YouTube. So thank you guys. And I will see you next week. Enough of me blathering on. Go and enjoy your week and I'll see you on the next episode. 